Today we're going to be talking about Estelia, Estelia Royale, which just released on Steam a couple days ago, something I didn't think would happen, and uh, just go over exactly what it is and why it's just really ridiculous that people are even giving this game an opportunity. Now, Estelia Online, if you don't know about it, is a relatively small Unreal Engine 3 MMORPG, released in Korea, I think in 2018, 2019-ish, and it did really badly, like so badly that it shut down really early on, and it was really easy to call, because if you did a couple of seconds of cursory research and looked at the play numbers of Estelia in, in Korea, in the PC bangs in particular, you knew the game wasn't going to do well in the West, because if a South Korean company develops a game specifically for South Korea, and they don't like the game, what are the chances of it doing well in a completely different audience, a completely different demographic that isn't South Korean players? So they had to reduce the grind a little bit for us because for whatever reason, South Korean games are usually typically a little bit more grindy. If you played any South Korean MMO, you know this to be true, even if they are slightly reduced in our versions usually. And then of course, they also limited the cash up a little bit because it was typically a pay to win game. Now it was pay to win mostly because the game functions on some mobile game design in terms of at the end game, like the most efficient way to get gear in the game would be to run dungeons. So they, of course, do in, in classic pay to win fashion, reduce the amount of dungeons you can run. They basically have a ticket system, just like stamina in a mobile game to limit free to play players. Like if you're free to play, it's not like BDO where in BDO you can play as much as you want and you can use that tool of having way more time than somebody who potentially has more money to get ahead of them by just playing the game a shitload. Well, Estelia decided, no, actually, free-to-play players should not be able to do this. They should just get fucked by pay-to-win players every day of the week, twice on a Sunday, maybe. So they put in the ticket system... And the game revolves around your typical uh, gear enhancement system, as well as there are there are Astels in the game. Astels being basically like Pokemon, I guess. You can summon three at a time, and they just fight for you. And they have different buffs, different combos together, different things that they do, what they're used for. So they're the main power feature in the game. Like, your gear's a big deal, but as far as I'm aware, the Astels were also like a huge, huge deal, to the point where if you got enough of them and the auto-loop feature, like I think it was a ring you could AFK farm in the game, um, think, things like that. I don't know how widespread it was because I didn't play the game a lot. It was just a really forgettable, bog standard, like does nothing um, exceptional, does nothing new. It was just what you played before in a hundred different low budget MMOs, just following the same path. So it was really, really forgettable. They also did this good old thing where they released the game and they said, we're committed to this game and we're going to release the gender lock. We're going to remove gender lock from the game. And they have five classes, five gender locked classes, three of which were female, two of which were male. So they said, you know, on release, we're going to release the gender lock on these two characters, of course, the male ones. So you can turn the male ones into female. So there's now five classes you can play as female and two as male. They said, we're going to remove the gender lock. And I brought up in my video, like, this is almost certainly not going to happen and why have they started with only the male to female classes well it's obvious because most of their target audience is people who would prefer to play a female character and dress it up it's waifu dress up simulator if you play bdo you know that the female characters are like more popular than the male characters because they show skin it's sexualized you know p people like it especially people who are more inclined to play this game which are traditionally you know anime fans stuff like that not to say like they're all degenerates or whatever, but it is just a, a thing. It's a phenomenon. You can judge what you want, but that's how it is. So of course, the first thing that they do, removing the gender lock from two male characters, allowing you to turn them into female, it's like, yeah, of course you're going to do that. That makes you money. That's not like, a, oh, we're doing this for you guys. That makes you money directly. People will play the female classes and they'll buy the female outfits that you've got in the game because they want to play the dress-up waifu game. But then, of course, we're like a year, a year and a half, to getting on to two years away from Estelia launching. And since then, it closed down in Korea. And the dev said, don't worry, guys, all the Korean players, all 37 of them are going to transfer to the North American realms and they'll play there. And we're just going to focus on this version. The game's not had that many updates, to be honest. And they've never removed that gender lock from those female characters. You can still play five female, two male. It's obviously th they're not committed to the game whatsoever. And then out of nowhere comes Estelia Royale. And the first I heard about it was on the Estelia forum. Somebody linked me a thread saying, 
what's this? Ooh, 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 bul bulgy, bulgy. And it was a link to Estelia Royale. It was in Korean, I do believe, the website. But it did translate over, over into English pretty easily. And it was talking about a new global version of the game. And I just thought, well, since it's closed in Korea, it would make sense that these developers had sold the rights of the game to another company. It's a blockchain company, by the way. I don't even know specifically what they do, but I know that they now own publishing rights to this game. It would make sense that they would sell publishing rights to them and just say, we've got our version that's only available in North America and Europe. So you use your rights for this in the other regions. It doesn't harm anybody. Um, and this version was going to be free to play. And that's what I thought it was going to be. But then they said, oh, you can play this new version in, in North America and Europe as well. And it's just like, you guys have literally just spit in the open mouth of your community that have bought this buy-to-play version, which, by the way, I didn't mention at the start, Estella Online was a buy-to-play game. Buy once, I think it was like $30. Or you could sub to the game for $10 a month and get access to the game for as long as your sub was running. But then there was an, an, another additional sub within the game that was optional that gave you things like dungeon ticket recharging faster and stuff like that, which was pretty mandatory if you want to play catch up in the game or if you want to stay competitive. So this is all context that you need to understand that when they released a free to play version that could also be played in the regions that the buy to play version was in, undoubtedly there you're harming the player base of the version of people who have supported you for multiple years. You're essentially just saying, you know, fuck you, we're, we're kind of done with the game. We just want a bit as big of a cash grab as we can get. And we think we can do it with this free to play version because contextually the free to play version there is no reason to play this, literally no reason to play this over the buy to play version, other than it's a fresh start, which which means that you'll be able to, you know, stay relevant for for a little while. But you can't because at least in the buy to play version, you could buy stuff with your in-game currency. There wasn't like anything you could buy that I'm aware of that was like immediately terrible power. I think it was just like mostly convenience stuff. But in this new version of Stelly Royale, it's it's so pay to win that it's it's mind boggling. I logged in to look at the shop. And by the way, I'm one of the lucky ones who could log in because if you look at the reviews of the game, it's like 30% positive reviews. So 70% are negative. And almost all the negative reviews are it's laggy, um, it's pay to win, the servers don't work properly. And the biggest complaint is the game sees like uh, ICUE software from Corsair for your RGB. Um, G, G Pro Suite for like using a G Pro mouse from Logitech, Razer software, they see that as cheat, cheat programs like keyboard software, mouse software, headset software. So it doesn't let you launch the game if you're using high quality peripherals. I got lucky with this. I managed to get into the game. So thank you, Logitech. Apparently I'm immune to this one. I'm, I'm immune and it would let me play this absolute dog shit dumpster fire of a game. Thank you, Logitech. Thank you, Estelia. But and it comes down to this weird situation whereby your anti-cheat is so bad and so strict that you're cutting off a large portion of people who even tried to give your terrible game a chance. Even though when I logged in, all I could see was a chat in Russian, which is not a big deal, obviously, but I'd, I'd have thought you'd have split it into different language channels and gold sellers, but they're not selling gold because gold's worthless in the game. Pretty much they're selling gems, which is the cash shop currency. And what happens with the cash up currency, why it's such a pay to win experience is they remove the level cap of gear in the game. So you can log on at level one and the auction house only works with cash up currency. So you can buy the best gear in the game and use it on a level one character and just be mega broken and just boost through all the game. You can buy everything in the cash shop, such as enhancement materials. Um, by the way, in this version, I'll read you the differences of the versions, by the way why there is literally no point to play this because bear in mind the other version costs 30 dollars and it's not that pay to win this version is mental pay to win and they've also made it slower to grind so you're playing a, a vastly inferior version of a game because you don't want to spend 30 dollars but if you look at the population of both versions almost nobody's playing anyway so not that big of a deal you might as well choose neither and go play a game that's not actually terrible and not terrible to their consumers, basically just saying, yeah, fuck yourselves, guys. Um, so the couple differences, I've I've checked this with like three or four different people in three or four different sources. But if anything's wrong here, this is their word, not mine. It says free to play, of course. Overall content was changed according to free to play. 
open world PvP feature available, updated contents, and then they say more like tweaked, leveling progress decreased, it's more grindy, the dungeon ticket refill takes way longer, so the system whereby you would get gear and resources later in the game is worse, and by the way, you can buy the dungeon tickets in the shop, unlike in the other version, which you can't. Auction slash broker is for gems only, gems being the cash up currency. Items break after failure to enhance, which again feeds into the pay to win. Oh, I'm sick of my gear breaking. I'll buy some pre-enhanced. Uh, I'll buy some pre-enhanced instead. Oh, I can only do that with real life money from the cash shop, of course. No censorship. This is a game, by the way, where your character literally can look like a child. And um, one of the classes by default looks like a child. And all of the Astels in the game are, are are scantily clad children characters. And there's like weird audio in the game where they're calling you master and stuff all the time. It's just a fucking weird game. It's a weird experience in the first place. So saying no censorship in a game that focuses on underage characters already is something like I'm just really weirded out about as to why that would be something you remove in this version of the game. Latency rate is higher despite the fact that I personally don't see the difference. No more level restrictions for gear and instant character deletion. So the game just seems fundamentally worse on pretty much every level. It's grindier, it's more pay to win. The only difference is that you don't have to pay $30 to buy in to play it. That other version is obviously on life support and is going to drastically go downhill now this version's released. Because for whatever reason, people would rather waste their time and not spend money on a game. And then just, you know, end up having to quit because you can't compete with people who can buy the best gear in the game and you you just can't it's it's just how it is so yeah that's that's estelia uh estelia royale as well i don't know what to title this video honestly i didn't really have a clear goal we're talking about it i just wanted to make the video because i saw it and thought yeah this is bullshit so if anyone sees this and thinks about playing it probably don't yeah thanks for watching stay safe out there we out peace mm -hmm.